and we're going to do a little bit of a warrior flow here. Um, we don't do warrior three that often, that's another balance pose. We're going to work into that. First we're going to do crescent warrior and that's another one we don't do too much. Um, crescent warrior is a little different because you're up on your toes. So your right foot is going to be up on your toes. The left knee is bent forward. And then when you feel you have your balance, let your arms come to hands to heart center. And when you're ready, you can lift those arms up for Crescent Warrior. Good job. So it definitely feels different than Warrior One. Bring your hands back to heart center. And let your foot come forward again. And once again, let yourself move a little bit. Bending into your knees, letting your left foot come back on the toes. And right knee is pointed forward. Hands come to heart center. And when you feel ready, arms go up. Crescent warrior. Good job. And once again, hands come to heart center. And step together. So warrior three is, like I said, it's more of a balance pose. So we're going to start out with Crescent Warrior again. So we're going to step back with the right foot. We're on our toes. And our right knee is bent. We're going to put our hands down by our sides. And we're going to slowly come forward and lift off that right foot. And find your balance. And when you feel ready, right arms come out, almost like a bird or an airplane. You can use a lock key if you need to. But we'll practice that and then come back to center. And let your legs open up here again. And stepping back with your left foot on your toes, right knee is bent. Hands are down by the side. Come forward. When you feel ready, arms go out. Definitely easier for me on one side than the other. Good job. And then coming back, hands to heart center. Well done. Okay, let yourself shake that out. <clears throat> and we're going to come back to uh, chair pose. So, bend your knees a little bit. Let's get them ready for chair pose. And then come to center. And when you're ready, sit back and let your arms go up. Good job. Take a deep breath in here. And out. Hands come to heart center. And straighten up. Point your feet so they're going to the length of the mat, about two feet apart. Toes are out to the front like this. And let yourself come down for goddess. Let yourself come down. And then let your arms open up to cactus arms. Feeling the strength. Good job. And then push up. Let your arms go up. And let your gaze looks up at the star. Bend your knees coming back into goddess. And up through for star again. Gaze looks up. Knees bend into goddess. Up for star. And one more goddess. And one more star. Job. Bring your hands back to heart center and let your feet step back together. Once again, hooking those thumbs, lifting your chest up, taking a breath in and out. Another breath in and out. 
as we turn to the long side of our mat. <clears throat> and from here, we're going to do a forward fold. So let yourself come um, back down. Let your head hang heavy. Shake your head yes. Shake your head no. Let your arms be loose. And find a place on the mat where you can come down to plank. Step yourself back <clears throat> into high plank. And we'll hold for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. You can let your knees come to the mat. And let your wag your tail a little bit here. We're going to do a heart opener. So we're going to put that right kickstand out. And when you're ready, open your heart up. Looking up to the right. Opening that chest. Just reminding yourself about the gratefulness again. And how our heart's connected. And how it feels to be grateful. And letting yourself come back down again into tabletop. Once again, wagging that dog a little bit. Setting that left kickstand out. And opening that left arm up. Self step back here and our belly coming to the mat. <clears throat> Getting our spine aligned. Bringing our hands so they're underneath our armpits. Pushing a pebble with our nose as we arch our back up into cobra. Looking to the right. Looking straight ahead. Into the left. And then letting yourself come back down. And once again, letting your back loosen up again. And when you feel you're ready, take another breath in, push the pedal, and let your cobra rise up. Looking to the right, straight ahead, and to the left. And just taking a moment, putting your hands out in front of you, and letting your head rest on your hands. Doing what you need to, you'll move from side to side. reposition so you're seated on the mat with legs out in front of you. <clears throat> and once again, checking your position. Is your back fairly straight? How's your posture? Feet should be flexed and up. And breathe in, let those arms come up. And as you exhale, once again, hands come to the toes. Maybe they go even farther. Maybe they don't. And letting yourself breathe in. Bringing your right knee to a bent position. <clears throat> Left arm comes around and holds that leg in position while the right arm comes around. A seated twist looking over to the over the right shoulder as you breathe in and out. One more good breath in and out. Sending that leg back down again. <clears throat> Bringing the left leg up. 
Wrapping that right arm around there. Taking that left arm around. Looking out over the left shoulder. One more breath in. And letting your legs straighten down again. And loosen those legs up by bringing them up and down. And uh, bring them to the side so your feet, the soles of your feet are together into the seated butterfly position. And letting them stretch out here. Starting to think about savasana. If you need to grab a pillow or a blanket, maybe darken the lights in the room. I have a devotion I'd like to share with you then for savasana. But meanwhile, here on the mat, let your legs come out in front of you and let yourself lie back. <clears throat> Crossing your feet at the ankles. And then rolling back and grabbing those alternate toes and letting your back stretch out here. And switching out, crossing in the opposite direction, still grabbing those toes. And then yourself go from side to side. One more big overhead stretch. <clears throat> Let your legs go and stretch, stretch, stretch. And then coming back. And placing your hands, if you like them on your belly, that's fine. If you like your hands on the mat, but getting yourself comfortable. Softening your jaw, your brow, your neck, your shoulders. Letting yourself come down for this final time of rest. Just going over again, creating a day worth living. Get up early. Express gratitude for what you have. Do something productive. Do something fun. Do something for someone else. Get some sunlight. Exercise. Do yoga. Go for a walk. Put a smile on someone's face. Express gratitude or compliment someone. Learn or do something new. And the attention that I shared with you today, I can decide today to recalibrate my energy and commit to love and joy. Devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. And that's from Colossians 4, 2. And this devotion goes back to ancient Rome, and it's entitled, A Thankful Heart. 
Seneca, the great philosopher of ancient Rome, was once accused by the Empress Messalina of adultery. After the Senate sentenced Seneca to death, the Emperor Claudius instead exiled him to Corsica, perhaps because he suspected the charge was fake. The reprieve may have shaped Seneca's view of thankfulness when he wrote, Homicides, tyrants, thieves, adulterers, robbers, sacrilegious men, and traitors, there always will be. But worse than all these is the crime of ingratitude. A contemporary of Seneca's was the Apostle Paul. He may have agreed. In the book of Romans, he wrote that one of the triggers for the downward collapse of humankind was that they refused to give thanks to God. Let me reread that again. He wrote that one of the triggers for the downward collapse of humankind was that they refused to give thanks to God. Writing to the church at Colossa, three times Paul challenged his fellow believers in Christ to gratitude. He said we should be overflowing with thankfulness. And as we let God's peace rule in our hearts, we're to respond with thankfulness. In fact, gratitude ought to characterize our prayers. God's great kindness to us reminds us of one of life's great realities. He not only deserves our love and worship, He also deserves our thankful hearts. Everything that's good in life comes from Him. With all we've been given in Christ, gratitude should be as natural as breathing. Gratitude should be as natural as breathing. May we respond to God's gracious gifts by expressing our gratitude to Him. With that thought, take a deep breath of gratitude in and let it out. And when you feel ready, you can let yourself have a little bit of movement in your head and neck. And when you're ready, turning to one side or the other into the position of a dreaming child. When you feel ready, coming up into the, an easy seated position. Taking a breath in. Exhaling. The next breath in, let your arms come up. Palms meet. As you exhale, bring them down to your heart. Loving, gracious Father, forgive us for the times we've taken you and your blessings for granted, creating us a thankful heart, so we'll honor and praise you for all you've done and for all you are doing. And Lord, please remind us that breathing and gratitude go hand in hand, and together we say, Amen. Well, I thank you for joining us today. Also, my gratitude goes to Aaron Porter and Glenn Dobra. Uh, Fred took the day off today. He had a little bit of surgery done on his head, and he's not filling up to doing yoga today. But I'll make sure he gets some sunshine, and I'm sure, hopefully, he'll be back next week with us. So, we'll see you next week. Breathe in the gratitude. But for now, bye-bye.